ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் டு டுடேஸ் கரண்ட் அஃபர் செஷன் ஆஃப் சில்ஸ்பீடியா த டாபிக்ஸ் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி இஸ் சவுத் ஏஷியன் நைட்ரஜன் ஹப் குளோபல் டேலண்ட் காம்படிட்டிவ்னஸ் இண்டெக்ஸ் பாரத் ரத்னா அவார்ட் அண்ட் வித் ரெஸ்பெக்ட் டு எடிட்டோரியல் டாபிக் இஸ் ஹைலைட்ஸ் ஆஃப் பிரசிடென்ட் ஸ்பீச் சவுத் ஏஷியன் நைட்ரஜன் ஹப் திஸ் இஸ் அ பார்ட்னர்ஷிப் ப்ரோக்ராம் தட் ஹாஸ் பீன் லெட் பை யூகே டு ஸ்டடி த இம்பாக்ட் ஆஃப் நைட்ரஜன் இன் இந்தியா அண்ட் சவுத் ஏஷியா இட் கன்சிஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஃபிஃப்டி ஆர்கனைசேஷன் ஃப்ரம் யூகே அண்ட் சவுத் ஏஷியா அமாங் தம் எயிட்டீன் ஆர் இந்தியன் ஆர்கனைசேஷன்ஸ் that are undergoing the study of how the nitrogen pollution has been impacting india and south asia apart from that this partnership program has been funded by uk research and innovation under its global challenges research fund and this nitrogen hub is one of its 12 gcrf hub under uk research and innovation the parties that has been involved in this hub is government ngos as well as international agencies apart from that india is the only country in south asia to complete to complete its overall nitrogen assessment for one year and apart from that we will see what are the nitrogen impacts and how it is going to india is undergoing so this overall impact of this nitrogen is it uh, in atmospheric nitrogen in atmospheric air totally 80 78 percentage of air consists of nitrogen and they are in the inert condition that is unreactive and it cannot be utilized by plants or any other species directly so it has to be fixed through uh, bacteria through the nitrogen national natural nitrogen fixation process as well as the, this cannot be helped to feed the whole growing population so we started to invented a new process of ammonia fixation that is artificial nitrogen fixation through the process called haber bosch process in this process this atmospheric nitrogen along with hydrogen gas at high temperature and pressure will produce a ammonia through this we are converting into nitrate and nitrate that will absorb by the plants for their growth purpose and this has been nitrogen has played a huge role in green revolution so through the green revolution india started to use more amount of nitrogen so for the plants we in agriculture in the npk that is nitrogen phosphorus and potassium the ratio has to be 4 is to 2 is to 1 but instead we started to use more nitrogen that leads to 8 is to 4 is to 1 ratio so our indian soil consists of more amount of nitrogen this started to become a pollution so a normal nitrogen started to become a pollution so this green revolution due to this green revolution we started to use more amount of nitrogen so when there was a rain or when there was a run of water from this agriculture field it started to enter into the lakes and nearby water bodies thereby causing eutrophia and it leads to algal bloom that it causes to water pollution apart from that it started to lead to soil acidification process also and also this ammonia and nitrogen dioxide which has been emitted from this industries as well as vehicle leads to this air pollution that contribute to this ozone depletion and apart from that the another form of nitrogen is nitrous oxide which has the highest global warm potential of 310 times that is 1 ton of nitrous oxide can harm that can be retained this heat trapped by on um, compared to this carbon dioxide amount is 310 times of 1 ton of carbon dioxide amount that this 1 ton of nitrous oxide can hold so this global warming potential of this nitrous oxide is also too high and apart from that in comparing the report recent study that is comparing this 2001 to 2011 the nitrogen emission has been increased from india about 69 percentage that shows how seriously india is undergoing this nitrogen pollution so we need to start to tackle this nitrogen pollution with a long term mission because the short term measures will not handle this nitrogen impact because we have increased amount of a 69 percentage so we started to have a long term mission how we can face by face we can reduce this nitrogen pollution and the next topic is global talent competitiveness index this index has been launched in 2013 to measure the ability of each and every countries to compete for the talent how they can grow how they can retain and they can nurture this entrepreneurship as well as this talent in their own country so this index has been prepared by inc the business school along with the partnership with tata communication and atco group and this index has five pillars and 68 variables and it consists of 125 countries and 114 cities and this year the country that has been topped in this global talent competitiveness index is switzerland with a score of 81.82 while among the brics the top performer is china rank of 45 the score of 45.44 and india has increased one rank from the 81 to 80 this year with a score of 35.98 the major challenge of this india to with respect to this global ta- talent competitiveness index is 
how to re retain this talent people and how to attract this talent people within India. And this year, this report, this 2019 index report has been special focus on how to nurturing this entrepreneurship and intrapreneurship. That is, intrapreneurship means that is a person having a vision of entrepreneur within a large organization. So this focus has been on how to nurture this entrepreneurship as well as intrapreneurship talent among the Indians. Apart from that, this smart cities program can be merged along with this competitiveness index so that we can have this smart cities can act as a talent magnets. So more people started to attract it towards the smart cities. And the recent longitudinal analysis that is studying from 2013 to 2019. So for the past five years, how this talent research has been undergone. By studying this, we came to know about that the countries which have more powerful talent attractiveness started to grow a much level. That is each and every year the countries that have more talent started to have more and more talent. While the countries that have a weak potential to attract the talents become more and more weaker. So the strong become stronger and weak become a weaker. So among this top 10 countries, only two countries come from this non-European. Rest of the eight countries has been European countries that non two, two non-European countries is US and Singapore and apart from that this shows that US Europe still act as a talent powerhouse that is most and most of brains from all the talented people from all the countries are started to pull towards this Europe and this analysis the recent analysis from 2013 to 2019 shows that there was a widening gap between the talents unequal economics that is more higher economics developed economies started to have more and more talented people and this underdeveloped countries will have more and more lesser number of talented people. This gap started to having much more widened. So this longitudinal analysis shows that stronger countries become more stronger and weaker country becomes more weaker. So the country that India we need to have more become a stronger country like European countries to attract more people towards India. Rather we India have more and more brain drain that is more talented people started to leave India and go to Europe and US or Singapore to have more and more entrepreneurship they can nurture in their own country. So we need to, this India, we need to have more, nurture this entrepreneurship. Then only the more talented people will start to retain within India and more other country talented people will also flow towards India. So the major challenge between India is how to increase our ability to attract and retain this talented people. And apart from this, this global talent competitiveness index, we also have with respect to this city, that is global city talent competitiveness index. Among that, the top city that has been having more talented people attracting potential is Washington DC. And with respect to India, Delhi and Mumbai is only in the list with Delhi having a 95th rank and Mumbai with 96th rank. The next topic is Bharat Ratna Award. This Bharat Ratna Award has been delivered in this Republic Day by the President of India. And this Bharat Ratna Award is the highest civilian award in India. The second most highest civilian award in India is Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan. So the criteria that for to award a Bharat Ratna is earlier it has been limited to some categories of art, literature, science and public services. While in 2011 it has been extended to any human achievements. So it can be given for Bharat Ratna award. So maximum three people can be given awarded this Bharat Ratna award every year. But it is not mandatory we have to give each and every year to Bharat Ratna award. So maximum three people has to be given and it will be this award this list will be recommended by PM to the President of India. And the order of presidents with respect to this Bharat Ratna award is it has the seventh rank of Bharat Ratna award presidents. So first rank goes for this president and the order of presidents and the second rank will be this vice president and the third will be prime minister and fourth the governors within their respective states and fifth will be former president and sixth CJI and speaker of Lok Sabha. And seventh will be cabinet ministers, CM within the state and former PM, leader of opposition party in Rajya Sabha. And this Bharat Ratna awardees will come under this 7A, that is the seventh order of presidents. And apart from that, the first Indian to get the Bharat Ratna award is Sasivi Raman. And the naturalized Indian citizen, that is the citizen who got Indian citizenship through the naturalization process. So the Mother Teresa is the person who got this Bharat Ratna award in 1980. And two non-Indians that who got this Bharat Ratna award is Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and Nelson Mandela in 1990. And in the 2019, the awardees are, first one is the Pranab Mukherjee, who served as the 13th President of India, as well as the Defense Minister, and he contributed much in the as the Finance Minister, Foreign Minister, and has lead role in the Board of Governors in 
IMF, World Bank, Asian Development Bank and African Development Bank. And the second person who got this Bharat Janata Award in 2019 is Nanaji Deshmukh. He is a social activist as well as he is a member of the RSS and he played a key role in the merging of Jansang with Janata Party. And he is also awarded Padma Vibhushan. And third person is Bhupan Hasarika. So Bhupan Hasarika is also known as the Bard of Brahmaputra. He is a singer, musician, lyricist as well as a politician from Assam. He also awarded with Bharat Vib Padma Vibhushan. And this recent, the India's longest bridge, this Dola Sadia bridge that is over River Lohit has been named as per this Bhupan Hasarika bridge. And the last topic is this highlights of President's speech in this Republic Day celebration. This celebration is one of the special thing because this year we are going to have this October 2nd will be the 150th birth anniversary of Gandhiji. As well as this November 26 will be the 70th anniversary of adoption of our Indian constitution. And this Lok Sabha election, this 17th Lok Sabha election will be the first time when the voters that has been born in the 21st century will be the major contributor in this Lok Sabha election. And the so president has said that this election process is not just a political exercise. Apart from that, it is the collective call to the wisdom to transform the India. And he also said that the connectivity is more important thing, the crucial thing that India is undergoing. Because that connectivity is the one that brings us together in the form of ports or inland waterways, national highways, metros, rural roads, as well as the cheap electric gas yes, services. So we can have more connectedness. So each and every people started to have more and more economic activity. And the next is the president has said that we need to have a more and more leapfrogging technologies that is that will transform each and every phase of the Indian people. So it will empower the farmers as well as it will be a help to equip the soldiers and it will help to nurture the startup culture within India also. And the president has said that Indian model has been based on this 3D that is this diversity, democracy and development. These three things are the pillars of this Indian model. We cannot have one over the another. That is one priority over another. We need to have all the three merged together because all the three are the pillars of this Indian model. And the best indicator that the social change has been happening in India is how we are changing towards this gender equality. That will show this how men, Indian men and Indian women will be equal to each other so they will be grow at an equal past level. And apart from that, we have to transform this Indian literate society into a knowledge society because Indian literacy rate has started increasing, but the knowledge level is not that much level increasing. So we need to have transform this literate society into a knowledge society. Apart from that, President has said that India is the one country that has the feeling of the universal brotherhood. So it propagates the universal brotherhood in the form of Vasudeva Kudumbakam. So we are feeling that all the whole universe is a one family. So in that manner, the partnership is one of the important thing that is a thread that has been knitting towards all the families and nation and the world together. So India need to have more and more partnership with all the countries within the family, within the nation, as well as with the world countries. With that thing, we will end up today's current session. Thank you. Have a nice day. Share and like, comment on this channel.